right, it's Dan Carr from Robotics Trends. I'm here with Pittsburgh based, uh, in Pittsburgh based Boston Over Robotics, speaking with Sir June. I'd like to address some of the more of some of the business issues related to the startup. One, uh, the size of the company, and also when was it funded, and how did you get? Uh, when was it? When was it launched, and how did you get funding for for the company? Bossa Nova Robotics is a uh, spin-off from Carnegie Mellon University, from the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University, and we are a startup company. We are eight people today. We started as three founders, and we have benefited from a tremendous network of support within Pittsburgh and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. When we started uh, full time to work, when we started to work on the company full time, it was in 2007, and we had the support of many economic development uh, agencies within Pittsburgh, as well as uh, Carnegie Mellon itself. So I, I of note are um, the Technology Collaborative, Innovation Works, the uh, Pittsburgh Technology Council, um, Wells, Wellspring Worldwide. These institutions have allowed us, have essentially taken a bet on us. They said we had a great idea, we had the people to, de to deliver on it, and they provided us not only with financing, but also with a network of support. For example, the offices in which we are here were provided by the Technology Collaborative. We have a very close connection with Carnegie Mellon that is an, a continuing source of ideas and talents. And um, we also have uh, many, many programs that allowed us to hire interns, for example. So all these come together. Uh, they, all these put together provide a real tangible support to fledgling companies such as ours. And I think we have been able to leverage them in a way that proves that, this, that the mechanism works. The Toy uh, Industry Association gives the size of the toy, toy marketplace at around $81 billion worldwide. Uh, that's a large marketplace. When you started developing these products coming out of Carnegie Mellon, were you looking at the toy industry as a, as a way to exploit it? How did you get into this industry? We were definitely looking at the robotic toy segment of the toy, uh, within the toy industry. And that was a flourishing segment that was growing fast. And we felt we had a unique proposition that would allow us to enter with fresh products. And our proposition is really centered around mobility. All our robots move, and that creates an emotional connection with the user. And uh, we felt that this would be very valuable as a product. And so we went towards that market, believing we have a proposition that would allow us to make a, a foray into it. Do you believe that robotic toy products uh, represent a, 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 a different type of segment? So say from a traditional toys versus video games and a new type, maybe c using combination of movement and intelligence? Correct. Movement, intelligence, interactivity as well. Uh, the, there is a phenomenon called kids getting older, younger. And that means that children are uh, uh, always seeking ever more advanced toys t for entertainment. And you, we can clearly see that with the, with, with the younger and younger age groups playing with video games. And therefore, we believe that robot toys are uh, perhaps more interactive than traditional toys and are in between, between video games and traditional toys. And it, there's definitely a demographic that th loves robots. And I think that demographic is not only children, actually. I know I, know I have a passion for it. I know you do. Yes. So uh, we're just... Uh, we, we, would, we love the idea of accompanying uh, people with robots starting from the younger ages. Well, now you actually have released product and selling product, but uh, are you going to look for additional sources of funding? We will, of course, look for additional sources of funding as we grow into the personal robotics uh, business. Uh, we have great, great aspirations to turn our lessons learned within the entertainment industry and leverage that discipline and that know-how into additional um, market segments, including personal robots, robots at home, robots perhaps for education, uh, healthcare, entertainment, and lifestyle. That's a fairly nascent market places at this, at this particular time. Um, can, you, can you describe some of the ways that your work with uh, consumer robotics products, toys, will, you will be able to leverage that to move into personal robots? And also, before we even talk about that, how would you define that term, personal robots? A personal robot is a robot that, with, with which you have a personal relationship. So it's um, perhaps a robot at home, 
that has a function, whether it is entertainment or, or other functions, and that you relate to. You are interacting with that robot in a meaningful way. And I think the work we have done within the entertainment sector so far, in particular with toy robots, allowed us to learn how to conceive and deliver on products that really build a relationship with the user. So you look at the robot and you actually are attracted by the robot. You want to interact with the robot. And there is this connection that is built between the user and the robot. And I think this is critical to deliver on personal robots. For robots to be accepted at home, you will, they will need to fit. And for them to fit, they will need to be part of the family. They will need to be natural to, inter to interact with. And so we already are, we will leverage our know-how in, in uh, designing robots to whom you can relate, as well as designing them within uh, an affordable cost structure so you can actually buy the robot and have it at home. So these two elements, I believe, are necessary to deliver on the personal robotics vision. And we're very excited to go down this route. And I know it's, it's pretty early in, in, in the evolution of those robots, but what types of functionality would these robots provide regardless of how you interoperate with them? The, the functionality is still to be determined, to, to be honest. Uh, what is sure is that what the robot does, the robot has to do very well. Uh, it, it should not be... Uh, it should not be an ex uh, a research experience where we're still figuring things out. It should really deliver an experience. And that experience can be centered on entertainment. It can be centered on other things, perhaps education, perhaps um, healthcare. But whatever it is that the robot will do, that has to be done very well so that the robot, so that it makes sense to have that robot at home, to, to buy the robot and interact with the robot over time. It's not a one-time interaction. It's over time. Great. And then um, one final question. In terms of uh, uh, the uh, um, excuse me, OEMs and partnerships in, 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 in the channel, um, how are you set up for that now, and what are you going to be looking for in the future? We're set up uh, with a great network of, of uh, manufacturing, OEM manufacturing, that's, that are supplying us not only contract manufacturing, but also component technologies. At the same time, we have channels for distribution, which we are building and have, we have had some success doing, doing so. What we, are, what we will continue doing from here on is continue to grow our network of suppliers of technology. And that technology can come from universities, can come from established OEM suppliers of components uh, that, will that will keep affording us the technologies that allow us to deliver on that experience in a way that's, that the experience is ever more rich and more, and, and more compelling. And on the consumer, on the distribution side, um, the distribution channel says a lot about the product. Where you buy it says a lot about what the product yeah. is. And as uh, we foray into consumer robots and personal robots, no doubt that the channels we would be seeking would not be restricted to, to toys, but would probably become also consumer electronic channels. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All the luck in the world. Thank you very much.